Uh, Dale Wilcox, Immigration Reform Law Institute, is in front of me right now, and I appreciate it. One of the things that always seems to be forgotten about, unfortunately, when it comes to illegal immigration is the identity theft. The identity theft. And it happens a lot more than people realize, right? I mean, you just, yeah, you, you, you were quoted in Breitbart. It was the top story. <laughs> Kudos to you. And I, when I read this story, I said, you got to be freaking kidding me. There could be 39 million cases of identity theft by illegal aliens in the last four years. Yeah, that's 39 only, million. That's only between 2012 and 2016. So you can imagine. Holy smokes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, what had happened was uh, the the IRS has had a tradition uh, for decades of sending out no match letters. When you go to get a job, obviously, you know, you get a W-2. Well, those mm -hmm. W-2s go to the IRS. They they match the name and social security number of the individual. And if there wasn't a match for decades, they would send a letter back to the employer saying, hey, there's a no match. We need to figure this out. Uh, the, the person mm -hmm. who's working for you might not be work authorized. Well, under Obama in 2012, when he uh, uh, initiated the DACA program, Mm -hmm. In order to get DACA eligible people to step forward and not be scared about being prosecuted for identity theft, for using social security numbers mm -hmm. in the past, he ended that practice. Just to protect, ah, the DACA people. Yes. Unbelievable. Yes, yes. Oh, he went even further. On the actual DACA application, it says, list all social security numbers you've ever used. Well, obviously, that caused a problem because most DACA uh, individuals had social security, uh, stolen or mm -hmm. fake social security numbers. Um, so the administration issued later guidance the same time they, they got rid of the no match, days after DACA was implemented. They said, oh, only report those numbers you were legitimately issued by the Social Security Administration. So they didn't have to report their unlawful use of a Social Security number, which is a federal felony. So what, Only if we did it. Uh, right, right. Yeah. So what we did was uh, we filed a Freedom of Information Act request with the Social Security Administration mm -hmm. asking, okay, since 2012, how many no matches have there been? They reported back. We had to sue them to get this information, by the way, but mm. they reported 39 million no matches between 2012 and 2016. That's Holy 39 million potential um, uh, cases of identity theft, identity fraud. And, and, and it's not just the DACA people. Oh, right. But there's well, I mean, DACA, I mean, yeah. they have social security numbers now. Yeah, now I mean, they do. But, now they do. But back then, as illegals, I mean, it was, I mean, how many DACA people are there again? It, it's 800, around 800,000, 800, right? Yeah. So you have that, and then you look at possibly 39 million yeah yeah we're talking about a four-year period holy uh, a, a small percentage uh might be due to a typo say yeah. at, in, in in the w-2 a small percentage might be due to uh women who got married and didn't report their name change yeah. to the ssa um but the overwhelming majority mm -hmm. are illegal aliens using uh someone else's social social security administration has stated three out of four illegal aliens use stolen or fake social security numbers to obtain employment in the United States. That's a proven fact. Social Security Administration released that years ago. Is the Trump administration doing anything? Has any, any changes happened? They're actually reinstituting the no-match letters. Oh. Uh, what they need to do is they need to go one step further, okay. and they need to notify the victim That's the thing. of the stolen secur social yeah. security number so that they can repair their credit. Well, now, why don't they? I mean, is it because it's too much work for a government employee to actually make an extra phone call? Uh, you I know, mean, they're probably going to say privacy concerns, or I, I don't know. But if it's proven yeah. that it's, in the end, it's proven that the, it was it was used fraudulently. And, and how is it privacy? I mean, if, if somebody from the IRS calls yeah. or Social Security says, hey, just want to give you a heads up, yeah. check your everything because somebody how is that that that, that? yeah right now if, yeah. if uh, um, they can't send out the letters obviously if it was the result of a name change or whatnot yeah. but yes 100 percent of the time if they find out it was used wrongly they should be sending out the letters and okay. it wouldn't impl implicate privacy it shouldn't implicate it, yeah. privacy you're using my number exactly and and, and here's the kicker uh children are 51 times more likely to be uh, a victim of identity theft and uh they're um, thieves and illegal aliens uh, prefer children's social security numbers because they won't apply for credit for years so they can go undetected. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the first time your kid goes to apply for a school loan or a car loan, they're going to find out, wait a minute, they have a mortgage, they have bad credit, they have criminal histories, and then you have to and clean up all that It mess. takes a lot of money, a lot of time to do that. Now, yeah. by the way, this is Dale Wilcox. Immigration Reform Law Institute is, uh, is his organization. Um, on KNST AM 790, why are kids that much more susceptible? Well, I think for that reason, is it I, just, I, I, 
because they don't just hand out their social security number and you know put applications out there. Right. I think there have been instances where nurses and hospitals have actually sold people's identities on the dark oh. web. So you have that going on. You also have um, illegal aliens will sometimes make up numbers, fake numbers, mm -hmm. but eventually those numbers will be issued to babies. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, so yeah, so sadly, the, the the kids get caught up in this. Is there any solution besides building the wall and deporting <laughs> illegals? I mean, that's well, that's yeah. the the number one. Right? I, th I think there is yeah. e verify okay. Man mandatory e verify nationwide. Congress needs to get off its butt and pass this. Um, e verify is a uh, uh, free uh, government online. Uh, a website that you can enter your employees' mm -hmm. information into, and it pings off of SSA's records and DHS records, and they will tell you whether the person is work authorized. And it takes only just a few seconds, that, right? It, Somebody absolutely. just swipes a card or puts information, and that's it. Yes. Now, we have it in Arizona, but it's not enforced. Yeah. I think there's employers are, are mandated. There's a law. You have to do it. But if they don't do it, I think there's only been like two companies in years that have been charged with anything. Yeah, sadly. Yeah. That's the truth. So it's like, you know, it, 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 it shouldn't even matter if it's not going to be enforced. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, uh, and, and there was confusion, wasn't there, Dale? Um, Molly Tibbetts, the illegal alien yeah. that allegedly murdered her. Uh, he worked at a farm. Originally, the farm said, oh, yeah, we use e verify. How could that happen? That didn't happen. Though. No, they it didn't happen. It. They would, didn't. Would e verify have picked that up? Oh, absolutely. So they just wanted cheap labor. Yeah. Yeah, uh, from what I've heard, news reports, I don't have uh, inside information here, but he used, mm -hmm. um, um, I, I think in one instance he used the real name and someone else's social. I, I believe that's the case. So E-Verify would have picked that up. Um, uh, it, 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 in, in the cases of children, E-Verify, mm -hmm. okay, if somebody's using a, a 40-year-old man is using a 3-year-old's social, mm -hmm. uh, that's going to pick it up right away. Right. Uh, so, and it doesn't, it doesn't cost employers any money, anything no. like that? No, it's free. No, it's absolutely free. You just have to sign a memorandum of understanding to use it only the way that they tell you. You have to e-verify somebody yeah. within three days of an offer of employment. You can't use it like a week later. So if I e-verify Garrett here and he fails, whoa. Oh well. So what happens to to, to him? Well, there is a federal law that was okay. passed in 1986 under mm -hmm. the first big amnesty yeah. that Reagan signed um, that uh, prohibits it. It, it actually uh, criminalizes employers hiring illegal aliens. Okay. So uh, there's a provision in there that says if you have knowledge that one of your employees knowingly employs somebody, uh, you're liable to be prosecuted. So you must fire them right away. Are you obligated to call ICE or, or somebody, one of the legal authorities to come and investigate this person or pick them up or anything like that? No, no. You're not, you're not required so you to decide, do that. We can't hire you. Sorry, guy. Got to go. Yeah. And, and that's they walk away because be, that's the big magnet to come here. Yeah, yeah, the jobs. And, and and that's why I said you know besides the wall, mm. e verifies probably something pe uh, uh, the administration could do that's even bigger than the mm. wall. Take away the job magnet. Exactly. They're yeah. not going to come if they can't work. Exactly. I mean, that's they why can't, can't support themselves. Right. Uh, Dale Wilcox, Immigration Reform Law Institute. What's the website that you guys have? Um, Early dot org. That's I R L I dot org. Yep. Okay. Find out everything you guys do. Yep. Fantastic. Dale, thank you so much for the time this morning. I appreciate it.